Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Ford, and we are here for a poetry discussion, which will appear in two separate playlists here on the channel. Number one, obviously, the poetry discussion playlist, which is now approaching 250 poetry discussions. And number two, the Emily Dickinson poetry discussion playlist. Now, this poem itself has already appeared in those playlists, but there is something that I want to talk about that... I, look, the conundrum of Emily Dickinson, the conundrum of Emily Dickinson poems, the conundrum of Emily Dickinson as a, uh, an entire sort of canon of poetry is that she seems to have attacked everything from both sides. Um, Life being the only meaningful thing, life being uh, pointless compared to the afterlife, God being everything, God being questionable. And obviously, when we're looking at the poems of Emily Dickinson, we're looking at the poems of someone who wrote poetry through the entirety of her all too short life. So it's not, I mean, I mean that's not... Um, that's not all that outstanding, considering that everyone is multiple. But there's one topic that she seems to sort of um, approach from both sides in the most troubling fashion, not as contradictory, but as complementary. And that, <clears throat> that is the question of nobodiness. That is the subject of loneliness. That is the idea of not being worthwhile, not being worth anything, not being anyone. This is something that Emily Dickinson's poetry seems to sort of play on. So when I say both sides of it, what I mean is approaching it from the idea that uh, people don't think you're anyone, but also the idea that you don't think you're anyone, that no one seems to think very highly of you, but also that you don't think very highly of you. And when I say you, I mean the, the, the speaker themselves. So while I think my two favorite poets are Bukowski and Emily Dickinson, and they are, I think, both read not traditionally, I don't think that it is um, best to take a single Emily Dickinson poem in the same way that I don't think that it is best to take a single Charles Bukowski poem. I think that Charles Bukowski is best read somewhat like a novel right? You take the book of poetry, sit down, and there is a character therein which becomes more of, more available, more apparent, more accessible to you as you read that novel in poetic form. But Emily Dickinson is different in that I think the best way to read Emily Dickinson is to pick random poems and sort of play with the ideas therein. The poem in question today, This Is My Letter to the World, is not just an outstanding poem, but it is an outstanding poem compared to other Emily Dickinson poems in what it is saying. But also a, a quote, which I recently found from Emily Dickinson, not a poem, but a quote from one of her letters. The poem reads as such. This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me, my simple news that nature told with tender majesty. Her message is committed to hands I cannot see. For love of her, sweet countrymen, judge tenderly of me. This idea that I, the world never wrote me a letter, this is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. This is simply the way that nature works. The way that nature works is creatures like me don't get letters. The way that nature works is that people like me simply disappear. Now, the reason that I wanted to talk about this poem today is a quote that I found in one of her letters to a friend I am out with lanterns looking for myself. 
itself a stunning line, itself uh, an incredible quote, itself something simply heart-rendering, rending. The, the idea that I am out with lanterns looking for myself. So out with lanterns looking for myself, what does that mean? It's a search party. Someone disappears. Someone can't be found at night. Everybody grabs their lantern, heads out into the woods, shouting the name of whoever it is that disappeared. That is what is being explained here. I am out with lanterns looking for myself. It is Out with a lantern is not just some common phrase. It's what it's pointing to. It is a search party. So this is the same the same poet that, oh, let me see if I can find it here. This is the same poet that has given us so many poems of loneliness. But here, I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell, they'd advertise, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public, like a frog. To tell one's name the live long June to an admiring bog. That is the same poet that gives us this. I'm nobody, who are you, or you nobody too. All the way down to, if I can get here ever, this is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. This is an individual who states herself she is searching fiercely for her self this is someone searching for the self this is someone whose quest to find the self is genuine to have reached the conclusion that you are nobody while also reaching the conclusion that you to reach the conclusion that you are nobody to you and to reach the conclusion that you are nobody to anybody else because to make the statement i'm nobody that's a personal statement it seems on the surface to be a reflective statement nobody thinks i'm anyone but the statement in the poem is i'm Nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Stating that I, to me, am no one. This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me, suggests to the world. Also, I am nobody. The simple news that nature told with tender majesty. Her message is committed to hands I cannot see. For love of her, sweet countrymen, judge tenderly of me. Now, there are many interpretations of this poem that it is, um, it is a reflective poem for religion, that it is sort of one of these poems where Emily Dickinson was breaking with religion because of her studies into nature. She, gets, she mentions the bees all the time, all of these things. I think that there is something, some substrate to that, regardless of what anyone wants to say that the nature news told, uh, anyone wants to conclude upon that, is the substrate that the world not writing to me is natural as well. So if on both sides of this argument, our speaker is coming to the conclusion that they are out with lanterns looking for themselves, I am out with lanterns looking for myself. This is someone who has come to the genuine conclusion, the genuine statement. They do not think much of themselves. For this individual's poetry, poetry to be read over a hundred years later, after it was written, perhaps makes it both true and false at the same time. 
was it Plato who said um, that concluded he had all of these people telling him how wise he was. You were the wisest. You were the wisest, Plato. You were the wisest. And he said, I, I set out to figure out, you know, how true is this? And he came to the conclusion that the only thing that made him wise was that he knew how little he knew. Is that the same thing with this argument? Is the acceptance of nobodiness what opens up the possibility that somebodiness, ironically, can occur? Think of the most bombastic people who refuse to kneel before the altar of dedication, whatever that dedication might be. The most egotistical people who do not stop to learn a trade, who do not pause in order to better the self. Think of those people. They might be boisterous and visible for the time being, but oftentimes, most times, every time that I can think of, those people flare out, flame away. They disappear when the time for substance comes. Emily Dickinson, refusing all of the pleasantries of life, Emily Dickinson refusing to um, refusing to become regular, refusing normalcy, knelt before the altar of dedication, that dedication to poetry. And through accepting that she was nobody, ended up being incredibly important, not just for poetry, not just for American letters, but for people who take her poetry and internalize it. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you enjoy what I do here, hitting the like button really helps me out here on the channel. If you enjoy what you saw, and if you find yourself here by chance but not designed, hitting the subscribe button uh, ensures that you will be able to stick around for the multiple videos every week that I drop on literature. Literature is the only thing that I talk about on this channel, dropping poetry videos every Monday at least, and I hope to have you back for the next one.